Hello everyone, it's Anthony Burton here for ABLG Design and welcome to the second part of our logo design tutorial within Adobe Illustrator CC. In the first part we covered the construction of the logo which is currently on screen and went over a range of tools that Illustrator has. If you haven't seen this video yet then we recommend doing so and access to this will be available in the description below. For this part we'll be covering the methods we use to export in our designs. Now there are many methods to this and also creating a logo or a design for that matter that other creatives use. Now there is no right or wrong way, it's just that the methods we use work for us and hopefully they'll help and work for you too. So the way we're going to show you how to export will help save time by saving your designs into various formats in one simple export. Now this will be really helpful when needing to save a large number of files for a client, especially when you have a tight deadline to meet. So before we delve into the body of this video, just like with part one, there is also a PDF for this section available in the description below also. So with all that now covered, let's begin exporting our logo. So if we come up to file and then down to export, now the way designers and creatives used to export is either via the export as option or the safer web legacy option. Now these are fine, but the only drawback with this is it only allows you to save your designs manually and one at a time through each format, which can be quite time consuming. And then if you wanted to export as a PDF, you'd need to come up to save as. Now this option is good if you have a lot of layers within your design and you need certain parts printed differently to others when you send it off to a commercial printers as this allows you to save your PDF as a layered PDF. So I'm just going to left click on save as a second and then come down to these arrows here and left click them. And as you can see that brings down a list of format options you can save in. And if we select Adobe PDF and then left click save, that opens up this window here. And then when you want to save a layered PDF, you want to make sure you've got the Create Acrobat Layers from Top Level Layers option selected. And then you would left click Save PDF and then that would generate the layered PDF for you. So I'm just going to left click Cancel as we don't want to do that. So before I go into our method of exporting, one thing you want to make sure is if you've got any text within your design, to convert that into paths. Now you can do that by using the direct selection tool which can be accessed up here which is A on a keyboard and then just selecting the text in your logo like so and then coming up to type and then down to create outlines or you can hold down shift and then command if you're on a Mac, control if you're on a PC, and then O, and then that has converted all of our text into a path and each individual character is its own object. So now we can come up to file again and then back down to export. And then in recent versions of Illustrator from 2016 onwards, they've introduced this cool new feature which is export for screens. Now I'm just going to left click on that and what that allows us to do is export our designs in multiple formats in this one simple process. So you've got two options here whether you want to export the whole artboard or the other option is export the assets. Now what that allows you to do is select each element of your design and drag them into this box here. Now I'm just going to left click cancel because you can access the asset export window by coming up to window and then down to asset export and it opens up this little mini window here and again all you'd need to do is left click on each element of your design and drag that into this box here. Now underneath you've got a list of export settings which we'll go into in a, in a second. And then if you want to 
divert back to the main export for screens window rather than go back up to file and then export you can come down to this little icon here left click that and that opens up the main export for screens window and alternatively if you want to go back to that little mini window again you just need to left click the asset export panel and then that will open that up for you so the way we export our designs is by using the artboards and as you can see we've got our two artboards selected now if you want to just have certain artboards exported you can just left click on this checkbox here and that will deactivate it or if you want all of your artboards selected just left click on all and that selects all of the artboards to be exported now if you want to change the name of your artboards just left click on the name and here you can type in your specified name if you wish I've already set ours as logo 1 and logo 2 and what that's also done is change the overall name of your artboards in general which I will show you in the artboards panel towards the end of the tutorial so if I come over to the right hand side of this window to the export to section here you can set the destination folder you want your designs to be saved to so if we left click on this folder icon here that opens up the finder window if you're on a Mac or the folder window if you're on a PC and here you can select the folder you want your designs to be saved to so I've already got mine set up so I'm just going to go ahead and left click choose and then underneath I've got the open location after export selected now you don't have to have this selected but what this does is once we export it will then automatically open up the folder we've just set our designs to be saved to so now we're going to go down and focus on the formats section of this window now we use an array of custom settings but you can choose iOS default settings or Android presets or you can left click on this cogwheel and that will open up another window of settings you can choose from so let's go over the formats we choose so firstly we're going to focus on the scale now if I left click on this drop down arrow here that gives you a list of options to set the scale at now you can choose via times the size of your design uh, or you can choose the specified width or height you want your designs to be saved to but what we choose is resolution now the reason for this is we work in two different resolutions when sending it to the client to keep it nice and simple and that is 72 ppi which is pixels per inch and that is for digital screens and then the other one we use is 300 ppi which is the recommended resolution for print so in the suffix that comes at the end of the file name whereas the prefix which is down at the bottom comes at the start of the file name now the prefix we don't generally use because we've already named the artboards and we're using a suffix anyway but feel free to use a prefix if you want to or a suffix whatever option it's completely optional for you so in the suffix to keep the file name different we've used hyphen 72 ppi now once this file is created it notifies us that that file is set to a 72 ppi resolution so then in the format we're using an image format which is jpg which stands for jpeg and we've got this set to 100 which is a nice high quality image now if we left click on this drop down arrow here you've got more format options to choose from and different quality versions of the JPEG image format but as I said we like to go for 100 as that's a nice high quality image especially at 72 ppi resolution and also 300 so if we come down to this add scale option here and left click that that allows us to add another format option 
So as I mentioned, we use two resolutions, 72 and 300. So I'm going to left click this drop down arrow here, then come down to resolution, and then just change that to 300. And then in the suffix, I'm going to do hyphen 300 ppi. And then in the format, I'm going to select that JPEG 100 again, which is that nice high quality image. Now, this is where the suffix or the prefix really helps out. Because we've got two JPEGs, despite having a different scale, it will just save it as one file unless we give it a specified suffix or prefix. Because Illustrator will get confused and they'll think it's just one image file. So that's why we have either one of the prefix or the suffix, as that really helps out there. And it saves confliction when saving the files. So the next two scales will add uh, different image format files. And I'm just going to add them in quickly. And again, using resolution. So I'm just going to set that to our resolutions of 72 PPI and then 300 PPI. And then the suffix, keeping it the same as the previous two, hyphen 72 ppi and then hyphen 300 ppi but illustrator has already set this for us but the other image file we use is what's called a png and that stands for a portable networks graphics and what that allows us is to save our design with a transparent background which is ideal for the client especially if they want to apply the design themselves to whatever coloured background source they want to. So that covers the four image formats we use to export our design app. So we do two more scales, but we'll do them individually as they are different. So if we add a new scale again, this time we're going to just focus on the format and left click on this drop down arrow here. And this time we're going to choose SVG. Now what SVG stands for is Scalable Vector Graphic. Now what it does is it defines vector-based graphics for the web in an XML format. Now when you're creating websites and you're using graphics and imagery in it, the idea is to not have too larger files in the website. Otherwise that will slow down the load time. So this option is a perfect way of decreasing load time. So that's why we add this and send it to the client. So now we're going to go to the last add scale. And this one is a PDF. Now, the only drawback with this method of saving a PDF is it doesn't give you the option to have a layered PDF. So if you want to go for the layered PDF option, we highly recommend you do the Save As option. So that covers the format settings we use to export at. So if I come down underneath, we've got the prefix option here, which I went over earlier. But then if we come underneath, Illustrator informs us how many artboards are selected. So in this case, we've got two artboards selected. And then it also tells us the total number of exports we can expect from this. So because we've got six format settings set and two artboards selected, we know there's going to be a total of 12 files saved. So with all of that covered, we're now going to come over and left click export artboard. And Illustrator's exporting that for us. And now because we set the open export location, it's opened up the file we selected and there we can see all of our files we've just set saved in our destination folder. So I'm just going to close this window now. And as I mentioned earlier, when we changed the name of our artboards, I said it changed the name overall. Now we can view that by coming up to window and then down to artboards and open up the artboard window. And then as you can see, our two artboards and now change to that logo one and logo two, and not the default artboard one and artboard two that Illustrator automatically sets it at. 
So this marks the end of the second part and also the entire logo tutorial. Hopefully this process has been helpful from designing the logo to the tools and functions Illustrator has and how to quickly export your designs into various formats. Now remember to take everything that you've learned in this tutorial and apply them to your own designs and also explore the potentials of your work. So as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit like and also that red subscribe button as it does help to support the channel and allows us to continue providing content for you all. And if you have any suggestions on future content for this channel, then please get in touch as we'd love to hear from you. So finally, thank you for watching and we will catch you in the next video. Bye.